My name is Joel. Uh, I designed the case for the WLAN Pi, so I'm just going to talk about that for a couple minutes. So we had some really, really quick requirements that we wanted to achieve with this case when we designed it. First off, we wanted it to contain a Wi-Fi adapter, obviously the WLAN Pi and also a Wi-Fi adapter. That way it doesn't get unplugged, it doesn't get broken off, it doesn't fall out, things like that. We wanted something that you could just chuck into your bag and not have to wor worry about assembling and disassembling all the time. So it kind of just becomes more of a tool if it's all nice and self-contained. Uh, we also wanted uh, easy access to Ethernet and USB on the bottom. That way you could plug in a separate Wi-Fi adapter uh, and of course you could get to the ethernet port, which in my opinion is probably the most important thing about the WLAN Pi. We also wanted to have an integrated cable holder. This was totally Keith's idea. Uh, because if you have to have a separate cable, you might lose it, something like that. So what if you just build the cable in? And I think a lot of us at this point are on USB-C. I've pretty much made the full transition at this point. Almost everything I have is USB-C. But we know that there's a lot of people out there that are still using USB-A. So Keith found this really nice little adapter. And, uh, and we basically allowed that to stay inside the case so that you could just go whichever way you need to. And also, one of the most important aspects about the design is that it needed to be easy to 3 3D print. We needed to be able to print this quickly without a lot of wasted material, and that influences the design of this kind of thing a lot. You really, really have to think about what you're doing when you're designing something to 3D print. You can't just make whatever you want and hit the print button. And that's true of any pretty much every manufacturing method out there, whether it's injection molding or CNC milling. You have to think about that stuff pretty much across the board. So the process that, that you always use when you're creating this stuff is first you model it, and then you slice it. You take that 3D model and you turn it into G-code, and then you print it. Or in our case, you model, slice, print, model, slice, print, model, slice, print. We went through lots and lots of design revisions to get to this point. Here's just some of the prototypes. You can see this very first one up here in the corner. I mean, it's literally just a couple of squares to make sure that, okay, we got the fitment right. The WLAN Pi fits smoothly in there. It all fits really nicely together. So here's what it uh, ends up looking like inside if you haven't popped yours apart yet. Uh, it's basically two halves that sandwich together. And yes, there is a little potato hidden inside. Uh, and also it sandwiches in the USB micro cable in there, so it's really, really firm. It really stays put really nicely. There are three M3 screws that hold it together, and in the United States, finding M3 screws is actually a huge pain. It's a huge pain to get those in bulk. I had to special order a bunch of them, whereas here we could walk into any DIY store and they just have hundreds of them sitting there, right? Um, it does snap together, but the screws are just so if you drop it, this isn't mine, this is yours, right, Nigel? So. I, I won't drop it. I'll, I'll be nice to it. But the screws are really just kind of a formality to really help clip it together. If the 3D print on your specific one isn't quite right, it kind of helps pull it together. But for most of them, you don't even really need the screws. They're just kind of uh, just kind of a formality. So we sandwiched it all together. The uh, the Wi-Fi adapter is really nice and it's all nice and firm in there. It doesn't wiggle around. It doesn't move around. If you shake it and you hear a little click, 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 it's really just the buttons inside the WM Pi. Everything's really nice and just kind of contained in there. Really, really well. Another thing that we did is the specific 3D printer that we used. Uh, we used the uh, the Prusa Mark III. So uh, Prusa is actually located here in Prague. I think it's kind of hilarious that I live in the United States. Uh, both of my 3D printers are kits that are from Prague, and then we bought all of our filament. The material that we printed these with is also from Prague, and then we spent a couple of weeks printing as many cases as we could, and then we brought them all back to Prague. So long trip to get to get to where they are. Um, the, uh, the Prusa, they offer a textured bed. It's a powder coated print bed. And so it gives that really, really nice textured look. And it also makes the parts really easy to pop off the bed when you're done. So it makes the changeovers really, really quick. Now, when you're 3D printing, um, a lot of people ask, well, what's the resolution of a 3D printer? Well, you have to give kind of the Sam Clements answer. It depends. It depends on whether you're printing horizontally or vertically. For example, this potato right here, um, since we're basically printing a layer with a 0.4 millimeter print nozzle and then moving up and then printing with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and then moving up, we are limited in our X, Y, what we can hit for resolution there. So the little dots on the potato, that's about as fine as you can get on the X, Y axis. Now on the Z axis, we have quite a bit more flexibility. We can actually change the layer height. You could print at a 0.3 layer height and you'd have these 
really defined layers that you can easily see. I printed these at a 0.2 layer height, so it takes a while, but we get really, really nice resolution, and we can also do some really nice little fine details like a little USB logo above, uh, above the USB-C connector. Um, one of the requirements that I mentioned is we wanted to have easy access to the micro SD card. I want you to be able to get to that really easily in case you needed, you know, something went wrong and you, you didn't want to have to take this apart. So we built a little tray in there so that you can get the card in there. I'll give you a little warning though. It is very easy to accidentally lose the SD card inside the WLAN Pi, in which case the whole thing has to come apart, including the WLAN Pi. So when you're putting the card in there, seat it in there and then just kind of gently push it. And if you feel it start to do something like, you know, not straight, if it's not going in there, straight stop and tilt it this way and get the card out and try again but if you seat it in there you just gently push back you should feel it seat in there and then you can click it back in now there is um, not a lot of clearance there getting that clearance right was kind of tough so if you eject your SD card and it doesn't just pop out then I then I would recommend doing what I like to call the catch-up trick you basically hit the bottom of it like a bottle of ketchup do you guys do that here in the in Europe at all do you guys have ketchup in glass bottles it's awful right mayonnaise. it's mayonnaise <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just hit the bottom of the mayonnaise bottle, and on Nigel's, it's not going to come out because it's Nigel's, and it's just not going to cooperate like Nigel, you know. <laughs> um, the other thing you can do, too, is if you kind of push the pie like this, you want it to seat on the very front. That's kind of helpful to do. So, uh, so here's what it all looked like when we had them all printed up. Uh, my wife's actually standing in the back. She ran the 3D printer while I was gone. Wait, you can wave. <laughs> She ran the 3D printers an awful lot uh, while I was traveling and stuff to help us get all these cases produced. So big shout out to her for that. Um, the video that I was going to show you of them actually printing isn't done processing yet on uh, Google Drive. So strike one for Google Drive. A lot of people have asked how long it takes to print these uh, to print these cases. So we have two printers, two Prusa Mark III is running side by side. We do three backs on one and three fronts on the other, and that takes eight hours to print. Uh, to print three complete cases. So we could get nine cases per day and that's running 24 hours a day. Uh, I, I definitely got tired, I don't know about you honey, but I got really tired of listening to the 3D printers at night <laughs> upstairs, my office being up above, uh, up above our, our bedroom. So one last thing that we'll do is uh, I just wanna show you the, you just kind of like what some of the software looks like that we use to design this. So I'll show you the, uh, the final version of the, the case. Um, I used an application called SketchUp Make. This is probably the worst tool I could possibly use. Um, but if you learn the wrong tool the first time, then you're stuck. And that's where I am right now. I'm stuck with a terrible tool. So this is kind of, uh, so this is the, the design file. You can see all the details there. It's in two separate pieces there. Uh, designing something in SketchUp is, is pretty straightforward. It's basically all about drawing shapes and then extruding them into 3D dimensions and then drawing other shapes on those shapes and extruding them into 3D dimensions until you get all the parts that you want. The most important tool that I have, I I think this is probably my all-time favorite tool is a pair of digital calipers. I paid like, I don't know, five euros or something like that for this thing. Super, super cheap. If you're doing any kind of 3D modeling, this is the most important one that you use. And in 3D printing, we do use millimeters for everything. Absolutely, absolutely everything is, uh, is in millimeters. Now the next step. And show where the power slot is. Well, then I'll run out of time. Wait, I don't know. I do what do you want to show? A little teeny slot. Well, you do you need me to hold it up for Nay? No. Okay, you got it. Little teeny slot. Which one? The, the SD where you cut that little hole. Oh, yeah, yeah. I almost put a picture of that in there. But again, I didn't want to run out of time since it's a 10 talk. That little notch right there is so that when you plug it in, you go, I wonder if it's booting up or not. Well, you just look in that little notch, and that's where the power light is. And so you can easily see whether it's booting up or not. So plug it in, go, yep, it's got power. It'll come on in a minute. So just a little uh, thing I put it in there to try to make it a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and slice. A, let's prepare a model for printing really quick. I got three seconds. Probably can't get it done. 
whatever. I'll take Troy's time that he had left over. And Keith took some of mine. So, <laughs> and I printed 75 cases for him. So whatever. So, <laughs> so we've just, uh, so we've just produced a 3D model. The format that it's, it's in is called STL, stands for stereo lithography. Then we're going to bring that into our slicer. This takes the model and turns it into G code. It's just basically a bunch of coordinates that the printer follows. It's a big text file. That's all it is. CNC milling machines have been using this for years. So we'll flip it over onto the correct side, and, uh, and then I'm going to tell it to generate some support material. Um, and so, because there's a lot of parts of, this, of parts of this that are suspended in midair, and 3D printers can't print in air, so we need to give it some material to build on. So we'll slice that model really quick, and now you can see, if we zoom in really close, you can actually see the tool path that the printer is going to perform. In fact, you can even see the infill there, as well as all the green stuff. All that green stuff is support material. And once the printer is, uh, is done printing that, you basically pop a sheet off, you bend it, and the parts go pop right off the printer. And then you get in there and just rip out the, the infill, you rip out the support material, and then you're left with your part. Sometimes you take an X-Acto knife and you kind of clean it up a little bit. And it's very satisfying to pull that, that stuff off of there. So cool. That's all I have to say about the WLAN Pi case. Come find me if you have questions. Thank you.